Welcome back to my channel. Today I am joined by special guest, principal oboist of the Atlanta Ballet, Erica Howard. Erica joins me today to talk about helping you find an accessible, affordable instrument to help you on your oboe journeys. Now we're going to talk about some of the instruments that we are seeing most of our students walk in with and some of the new models that are on the market that we saw at International Double Read Society Conference and we are excited about. And not to mention all of that, there are coupon codes to help you get discounts from anywhere from $500 to $1,000 off some of the instruments. So this should be a really good time for all of us. Not to mention, Erica even joins us at the very end of this video to do playing examples so you can hear each of these uh, instruments and the different reads that we matched them with. So if you want to just fast forward to the sound clips at the end and not a review of each of the instruments, I will go ahead and put a timestamp here so that you can go ahead and skip forward to just the playing examples. Okay, let's dig into the most popular instrument that we have seen on the market and some of the challenges that go with this instrument. This is the Selmer 1492B. Talk to us about some of the challenges that you bump into with this instrument and in which I've seen as well. Okay, so there are three big things that you're going to notice in terms of key work that are going to start holding students back within about their first six months of playing. Uh, the first is that you don't have a left F key. Um, and then the other is that you don't have a forked F resonance key. That's going to mean you're going to be playing the forked F most of the time in band, which just doesn't sound as good as left F does on an oboe that has one. Uh, and the lack of resonance key means that if you're playing that note without the E flat key, it's going to sound like you've got a sock in the end of the oboe. Uh, so, you know, if you're an aspiring young oboist looking to try out for middle school Allstate and you want to play a D flat major arpeggio, you're just going to have to deal with it that that note doesn't sound like the other notes and doesn't sound like it would on a better oboe. Uh, Even the, I have called Erica and said, why do I sound bad on this note? And she was like, it's not you, it's the instrument. So yep. I don't care how high quality of a player you are, this is a challenge for everybody. Talk to us about what else is missing. Okay, the other thing is that we don't have the low B flat key here on the bell. Theoretically, you're supposed to play a low B and then cover these holes with your knees, which works about as well as you think it does. We uh, have a sound clip of that uh, that we recorded to demonstrate that the sound sounds almost like a trombone when they you open the legs to get the note out because it wah. <laughs> It does have a few other limitations that we'll go into in more detail on the blog, but those are the things that are going to jump out at you really soon in your oboe career. Yes. Erica joins me as co-author on a blog this week. I will put the link to that in the description box down below. So if you want a more detailed look at all of these instruments, you can go ahead and check that out. Now, the Selmer 1492B retails for roughly $1,800. That's an instrument that's going to last you at best, I would say, about six months of your oboe career before you're going yes. to need to upgrade and then sell that instrument. We have so a... Before we do that, I just wanted to interject. Yeah. The Yamaha 241 is the other entry-level model that you may have come across uh, that does have the same key mechanism and same limitations as the Selmer. Uh, it's about the same cost as the Selmer. Uh, that being said, it does have a little bit better of a sound, but again, it's just not going to be an instrument that will do what you want it to do after just a few months of playing which then you're trying to sell the instrument that you just bought. So at International Double Read Society Conference, we came across the brand new to the market Nobel Instruments. This Nobel instrument is a wood composite. This is the PVNO2, and it retails for $17.95. Now that is if you use the Aaron Oft discount code when you go to their website. Uh, regular pricing is going to be about $2,295, so you definitely want to make sure that you use that discount code. Now, this is not a plastic oboe like the Selmer or the Yamaha that we just spoke about. This is a wood composite. So talk us through not only the wood composite and what that means, but also I am noticing we have got some more keys on this one. Okay, so the wood composite essentially means that uh, the body of the instrument is made from the same kind of wood as a wooden instrument is, uh, but the it's ground up into dust first and then basically just glued back together with an epoxy. Uh, what that's going to do is it's going to give you the sound of a wooden instrument, but it's not going to crack. 
Uh, we're not going to go into too much depth about cracks here. There's more on that on the blog post, but that is a really good thing to be able to avoid cracked instruments. So mechanically speaking, uh, we do have the left F and the forked F resonance and the low B flat key. Uh, yes. There are also a couple of trill keys uh, that are not on the Selmer. Uh, it's not quite full conservatory, but this has all of the keys that you're going to need to get you through several years of playing at least. So we're looking at roughly the same cost, more keys, and a higher quality sound. Already I am like much more in love with this instrument. Let's go ahead and go on to the next instrument that is in the Nobel line, just in case you're looking for something that's just a slightly next level up that is also a wood composite. This is the PVN01. This one with the Aaron Oft discount code comes in at 2295 and this one, I believe, is a full conservatory, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, this one is full conservatory. It does have the split E ring and the banana key uh, that you don't have on the uh, lower model. It's slightly thicker walled, so it weighs a little bit more, but that's going to give you a bigger, more rich sound to it. Um, and again, just get you a little bit further down the road in your oboe career before you feel like you need to step up uh, into the professional realm of instruments. Now this one, uh, retailing at uh, 2295 being a wood composite, I believe could be in some ways comparable to, dare I say, the Renard 330. The Renard 330 is also free, uh, full conservatory, but it's all plastic. Yes. Correct? Okay, we have a Renard 330 here. Um, I have to admit that um, the keys, all the same. Yes. That's, uh, yeah, and the, uh, this particular 330 that I'm holding is not brand new, so it doesn't have the B-flat resonance key or the third octave key. If you were buying one new now, those are now standard on a Fox instrument, uh, so there is no difference key work-wise between those two other than uh, the Fox doesn't have the split ring E, uh, but it does still have the vent hole in that key, so the sound of the E will be the same. Uh, you just won't be able to do the D-sharp E trill as easily. And I have to admit, we've already filmed the sound cutaway clips, and I actually liked the sound of the wood composite Nobel instrument better than the plastic Renard sound. And interestingly enough, it's coming in at $1,300 less than the cost of the Renard 330. So, I mean, that's my personal preference. How did you feel about it? I felt the same way sound-wise, uh, and, you know, especially, uh, well, yeah, that's more than most people want to spend off of the 330 for day one of oboe playing, uh, or if you're a band director looking to purchase instruments for your school program, you can buy two of the Nobel instruments for the price of one 330. That just says it all, doesn't it? Now, if you think we're done, no, no, this is like a Ginsu Knife commercial. We have one more Nobel instrument to share with you guys. We have the PVN01H Deluxe Oboe, which retails for uh, $29.95, which is still $500 to $600 less than the Renard 330. So talk us through this top-end Nobel instrument. Okay, so uh, in terms of key work, this is identical to the uh, other model that we just looked at. Uh, the difference is that on this one, the lower joint and the bell are solid wood rather than composite. Uh, it's a little bit heavier uh, still, but again, that's going to give you a richer, fuller sound. There is going to be a little bit of a break-in period uh, sound-wise with that. Uh, to begin with, the low register is a little bit more resistant, but it will open up with a couple months of playing uh, and just give you um, one more layer of sounds there. Um, the only thing to watch out for with that is particularly if this is something you're looking at getting for a band program where it may be sitting in a locker in a, with no climate control all summer. Uh, for the most part, when instruments crack, it is in the top joint. They do occasionally crack here. Um, if you're a student or a parent looking to buy this uh, and you're going to be playing it all of the time, that's not really an issue, but that can happen uh, if the instrument is sitting unused for a few months at a time. Fantastic. I do have to say that Erica regularly takes care of all of my students' oboes and has joined us for oboe repair at Jacksonville State University. So when she speaks about the cracking and awareness of that, she does have a solid background to be speaking from. She is not just a performer, she is also an educator and as well a repair technician and a reed maker. Um, I do have to say that in the uh, cutaways that we're going to go to at this point now, she does demo on the standard Jones reed, most of the band programs that I'm aware of. When they do purchase store-bought reeds, they are 
are typically the Jones reeds, so we will demonstrate what they sound like on a Jones reed. And she also offers handmade reeds, the reed that she has matched to all of the uh, instruments that she played today is one of her own handmade reads. So if you do want to pick one of those up, her info will be in the description box down below. That, that was in fact the read and not like a mechanical thing. That's, that's what that high E flat does on this. That was cute. <laughs> Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Thank you to Erica to joining me today. I hope you enjoyed having her as a guest on the channel. If you wanna keep up in all the adventures, there is always Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and I hope to see you guys next time. Bye.